everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm Ellen March, Director of Content for Sulky of America. And today we have a very special So What for you. I'm going to be taking you through the Keepsake Key Fobs project. And I'm really excited to get started. I'm going to give a little bit of time for people to come in and start watching live. And while we're waiting for everybody else to join, uh, I want to make sure that you are all aware of our next embroidery sewing session. So today's project that I'm going to be going over with you is a project designed by our friends at Designs by Juju. And we did present this as a free webcast on our education platform over at sewingonline.sulky.com. We presented it quite a while ago and it was so extremely popular. So we decided to compile some special kits for today's So What. We have limited quantities of the kits available, but you can grab up a kit and I will go over that shortly. But at any rate, Designs by Juju, Julie Treeb of Designs by Juju came up with this project for our free webcast. And uh, it, it it's so great. It's great for gift giving. You can do multiples um, in the hoop so you can stitch out quite a few of these at one time or all together, I should say. So I'll get to all of that momentarily. Um, but uh, what I was getting at was today's project is done all in the hoop of your embroidery machine. Um, so if you're super into in the hoop projects, I want to make sure that you are aware of our quilty wall hanging embroidery sewing session, which is also brought to you in partnership with Designs by Juju. So Becky Thompson of Power Tools with Thread, she works with Designs by Juju a lot. She's done a lot of tutorials on the end-to-end -end quilting designs that Designs by Juju features. So we thought it would be great to do an extensive embroidery sewing session where you learn how to use the end-to-end -end quilting designs and you can create a special wall hanging for your sewing room in the process. So with purchase of the embroidery sewing session, you get the end-to-end -end quilting uh, designs, an entire collection. It's something like 13 hoop sizes in uh, two orientations, so you can stitch it out horizontally or vertically, depending on you know how big your project is that you want to quilt. And it's a great design that features sewing machines and thread spools and little, you know, sewing motifs to go along with the sewing theme of the wall hanging. The wall hanging is 18 inches square finish. Uh, so it's great to put on your wall of your studio or on the door, or you can gift it to a sewing friend. Um, it's so, so great. Here is what it looks like. Um, since my head is kind of covering it up, let me show it to you here. Here's what the wall hanging looks like. So you create this nine patch friendship star, and then we're going to quilt it with the end to end quilting designs. You're going to learn how to do friendship star appliques in the hoop for those corner squares. And then you're also going to do a sewing machine applique with a little 3D fabric embellishment. So all of this is covered very extensively in our embroidery sewing session um, over at sewingonline.sulky.com. It goes live, well, I shouldn't say it goes live, it activates on May 9th. So what that means is it's not a live event, it is all recorded videos so that you can watch whenever you have sewing time or you can go back and forth, pick and choose the lessons that you want to review, all kinds of things. It's, it's really a great way to learn because you're in the driver's seat and you can choose. Do you want to read the post that goes along with this lesson? Do you want to watch the video? Do you want to get the downloads and freebies? All of that good stuff. So that's what that looks like. Of course, we have a kit for the sewing session as well. So if you're going to be grabbing up today's Keepsake Key Fobs kit at the crazy deal that we're offering today, and you want to get to that free shipping threshold, you might as well grab up 
your quilty wall hanging kit at the same time. And then you will get there and you'll get both kits and you'll be ready to roll. All right, so enough about the quilty wall hanging. I hope you all sign up over at sewingonline.sulky.com. I linked directly to signing up for that session in the description of today's post. Also in the description are all the live links for everything I'm going to be talking about today in our special So What episode. So if you have never joined us for one of our free webcasts or video casts, then you're going to get a little taste of what that looks like right here on So What Today. We wanted to bring you one of our free webcasts so that you can check it out. And then you can go on over to sewingonline.sulky.com, create an account, and get lots more content like this. So this is Keepsake Key Fobs. I'm so excited. Um, it looks like we've had uh, quite a few people join during my little intro, so I'm glad we waited a little while so that everybody could join us. And also, if you have to uh, step away for a minute today or you can't join for the entire live stream, don't worry, you can log back into your Facebook or YouTube account and find this So What episode and review it. You can also add the original Keepsake Key Fobs free webcast to your personal library over at sewingonline.sulky.com. And Julie Treeb herself joined us for that webcast, so you'll be learning from the digitizer herself. But today, I'm going to be sharing with you my tips and tricks for this project because as I was working my way through it, I discovered some things that make our lives a little bit easier at the sewing machine. So, uh, you know, the original webinar was fantastic and if you joined us for that, you're gonna be getting some new tips and tricks, hopefully learning something new from me today as well. All right, uh, Leslie says, I did the key fobs, they were fun and easy to do. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. But again, I hope you learned something new from me today. And maybe you can go and make some more key fobs using the designs that came in your kit with my tips and tricks. So also, if you have your own tips and tricks to share during today's uh, So What, please put them in the comments and the live chat because I will be giving away two Keepsake Key Fobs kits today during So What. And as long as you are watching, sharing the post, commenting, giving me those great emojis, engaging with the post some way, then I will be able to automatically, um, uh, or I should say you are then automatically eligible to win one of our Key Fobs kits. All right. Woohoo. All right. Let's get started here. So first up, I have my kit right next to me. So we'll be going through all of the kit today. And basically what I'm going to do is I'll give you an overview of the project here on uh, the slides here that you're viewing. And then we're going to switch on over to our sewing machine view. And I'll show you some of those tips and tricks for the stitch out. All right. So in your kit, when it arrives, you will get all of these great things. And it does say that you have enough materials to create six key fobs. But I will say you will get plenty of snaps in two different colors. On this image, you only see those white snaps, but we decided to throw in some pink ones and some white ones, and you have plenty of these to play with. So if you're inserting a snap and one of them breaks or something happens, you'll have plenty to replace it with and more to create some more key fobs. Now, you will get six of the uh, swivel clips. So that's why it's technically only enough to create six because you only get six swivel clips. But those are easily found at your local fabric store, craft store, um, and you may even have some on hand. So don't worry if you want to create some more because you have extra materials in your kit. Just grab up some more of those uh, swivel clips and you'll be on your way. Because I have made, well, I've made several of these, but out of my kit materials, I've made two so far. We're going to make some more today. And I will say, you get all of this great marine vinyl 
Um, it really looks and feels like faux leather, um, except for this really fun black sparkle. Isn't this fun? So we've got a couple of sheets of the black sparkle. You'll get a couple of sheets of the turquoise and then a couple of sheets of this pretty pink. And I'm just going to show you kind of my leftovers. So to create the one key fob, I took one of these sheets and I strategically placed it in the hoop and I still have enough left that I can make another one out of my leftovers and I still have another sheet left. So I could probably get 12 key fobs out of the marine vinyl alone. Um, and then of course there's enough thread and snaps to create that as well. So you get quite a few um, stitch outs out of your kit. Like I said, you'll just need a couple more of the swivel clips if you wanna continue making key fobs and who doesn't, right? So quick and easy, such a great gift, all types of things. All right, so speaking of the thread, you will get six spools of thread in colors that coordinate with your uh, marine vinyl. So you'll get a silver, you'll get a turquoise, a black, a white, a pink, and then this really pretty variegated color that has the light pink, some fuchsia, a little bit of white, and that makes a really, really pretty look, especially on this light pink color or even on the turquoise as well. Really cool effect. Um, let's see, I should mention the thread is 60 weight poly light thread. And I'm gonna go over that with you momentarily and tell you why we went with that thread weight because it's a much lighter thread weight than you would normally use for machine embroidery which is typically 40 weight thread. So we'll go over that momentarily here. My comments are stalled, so let me check it out here. All right, here we go. All right, I'm back in business. You'll also get a pack of organ needles. This is a size 7010 Microtex needle, really great for this type of fabric. It has a nice, slim, sharp point um, that's perfect for this thick, marine vinyl that has no stretch to it. And then you will get your trusty, sulky, sticky plus stabilizer. All right, so let me show you how it all comes together. And then like I said, um, we are. I, I will then shift gears and show you at the sewing machine. I also wanna mention you probably will like some KK2000 temporary spray adhesive. Uh, for help in placing your vinyl onto your sticky stabilizer. And yes, the stabilizer is sticky, but I will show you why I also like the addition of the KK2000. Also a cam snap setter. So these snaps, as you can see, they have their cute little hearts. Isn't that adorable? So this is great for Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, graduation gifts, all kinds of things. And then the back of the snap is a circle. So if you prefer the circle to the heart, as I mentioned, you'll have enough snaps to where you can mix and match those as well. Um, but at any rate, these are cam snaps. They're plastic snaps. They have a, they have four parts to each snap. So you'll have a cap and a socket and a cap and a uh, stud. So on the back, you can see I always say male and female piece because that's just what I'm used to saying um, for all different kinds of snaps and things like that. So, you know, your female piece is recessed and your male piece is not. And then you have your two snap caps. So you need a cam snap setter in order to set this type of snap. And the kit does not come with the cam snap setter, um, but we will put a link in the comments here so that you can uh, easily head on over and grab up a, a snap setter. Alternatively, you could fold over the back part of your key fob and just stitch it down on your sewing machine. But keep in mind, you'll be going through a lot of layers when you do that. And then it, your uh, swivel clip will then be permanently attached to your key fob. Whereas right now, 
I can unsnap it, take it off, switch it out. If I want to make one in every color for my own self, I can switch it out um, whenever I want. So options. And again, we will go over that as well. But I just wanted to mention that you do need this specialty snap setter in order to use this type of snap. Looks like this. It's super easy to use. Um, it looks like a dental tool or something like this, um, but it's just, I don't know how to describe it. It's just so much easier to use than some of those other snap setters where you really have to clamp down hard for those metal snaps and things like that. Um, so this one is really what you need. And you can grab up a kit that also contains a little screwdriver and an awl, um, which also helps you set the snap. Um, this is the one I grabbed, the one that you're seeing the image of. Um, it also comes with like a large pair of tweezers and some different size snap dies. So if you want to grab up a larger or smaller cam snap for different uh, projects, that's why you need the little screwdriver because you'll need to insert a new die into the snap set. But it's very easy to use. It's a standard size cam snap. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that you'll also need that. And yes, Sue says the snap setter is not too expensive either. It's not, it's about, I don't know, 25 bucks or so. And it comes with all these tools and it actually comes with a plethora of other snaps as well in different colors. Usually you can buy it without the snaps if you want. Um, but I found for the same price, you can grab up a snap setter that also comes with some different snaps that you can use for all kinds of projects. All right, so lettering. I'm sure a lot of you being embroidery enthusiasts love using lettering designs. It's one of the greatest um, reasons why we like to do machine embroidery is to personalize things, right? Monograms, names, messages on quilts, signing our work, things like this that we can do in stitches. So just some tips and tricks for perfect lettering designs. And I will say that these tips come from designs by Juju and I 100% agree. Um, uh, Julie says, invest in, in embroidery editing software. She really loves using in brilliant software and there is a free version that allows you to do certain things so you can kind of play around with it and see if it's the software for you. Um, but there's all kinds of things you can do just with embroidery editing software. And you don't need to invest in a software that has all kinds of bells and whistles and digitizing features. If all you want to do is manipulate designs or add monograms or, um, you know, personalize with, with a message or lettering, things like that, then look to some simpler embroidery editing software. If you never plan on digitizing designs, then you don't need those features, which oftentimes are what drives up the price of those software packages. Um, let's see. And yes, it's worth taking the time to get to know your software. Um, I am definitely a victim of this. I don't know if victim is the right word, but you know, I get something and I just want to start using it and I get used to one or two features and that's what I use all the time and it's really worth it to, <clears throat> excuse me, go on YouTube, find some tutorials. Your software probably came with some tutorials. Check them out, block out an afternoon's time, learn something new piece by piece and add it to your repertoire of things to do at your embroidery machine. Also utilizing your alignment tools in the embroidery editing software and also familiarizing yourself with your on-screen editing capabilities, which I'm going to show you momentarily. Also, don't be afraid to do that test stitch. I know a lot of people really hate the test stitch process because it's time consuming. It also uses up fabric and thread. Um, but I will say most of us have a pretty good stash of both of those things. Am I right? <laughs> so those test stitch outs can really save us in the long run. 
even if you are just going through the motions, starting out the stitch and stopping after maybe 100, 150 stitches, just to see how it's performing. It really, really can save you a lot of headache in the end. Also, slowing down your machine speed. Again, I just, I love the pedal to the metal, I'm going to say. You know, I, I am turning and burning projects like no other, and I, you know, oftentimes am, am, am sewing too fast. So it really doesn't save you all that much time to slow your machine at least to half speed, making sure that your stitches are forming properly and there's no loops or you're, you know, you've got the right size needle, all of those good things. All right, thread and needles. I'm going to remove myself from the screen so that you can see the side-by-side -side photo here. Um, so remember when I was talking about using the 60 weight poly light thread rather than the 40 weight poly deco or rayon thread. Now for lettering designs, especially when we're doing smaller designs, when you go down to, let's say a half inch monogram or letter, um, you know, if you're making a quilt label or you want to sign your work, like I mentioned, um, I have seen people use their sewing machines without their embroidery machine and choose a letter stitch and sign their work along the binding of a quilt, things like this. When you go down that small for your letters and you're using a 40 weight thread, sometimes the thread can sort of build up or overlap itself um, throughout the letters. So you get these almost like puffy looking letters and they can become hard to read. So when you go down to a 60 weight lighter thread, all of a sudden you can read it, you have nice crisp letters, and all is right with the world. So for this project, we're gonna be going down to the 60 weight poly light embroidery thread, and we will use that same thread in the bobbin. You could also use sulky 60 weight bobbin thread. However, they're the same weight, okay? Um, and I'll get into that momentarily because there is a point during the stitch out where you're going to want the same colorful thread in the bobbin as you have on the top. And it's for the final stitch when you add the backing to your key fob because you're gonna be seeing that thread on the wrong side. So if you use just a generic, you know, plain white, black, gray bobbin thread, um, just make sure you're okay with that color on the back side of your vinyl. All right, so for this particular design, you can see that A on the left was sewn out with the 48 Poly Deco. And honestly, it looks pretty good. But the B that's stitched out in the 68 Poly Light looks a little bit crisper. But if you look underneath, and you're reading the word angel or the word Bailey, the word angel almost looks like a totally different font and it's the same one. So do you see how the stitches look so tight and close together that if you were writing a longer sentence in that smaller font, you really wanna go down to a lighter weight thread for those applications. Working with lettering software. So I forgot to mention when I opened up my kit that when you purchase the kit, which is at a crazy flash sale, $29.99 for the kit today only. Hold on, we need a round of applause. It's only $29.99. It has a 74, I believe, $74 value. So crazy flash sale on the kit. With your purchase, you get the key fobs in the hoop design, which comes in as a blank file. You also get the Mary Kate monogram, which was designed exclusively for the key fobs project. So 
So it has this really pretty scroll outline. I did sort of a tone on tone here, but I'll show you lots of versions momentarily. And then it also comes as um, you can have a blank scroll design that you can personalize with a different letter or font. And then it also comes with the letter in all the letters of the alphabet that you can import into your machine. So with the purchase of the kit, you also get that entire monogram set as well as the key fobs in the hoop designs. So for $29.99, I don't even know if you could buy the two designs for that price. Perhaps, but at any rate, great deal. All right, so if you have the Embrilliance Essentials embroidery software or a different embroidery editing software, you can actually type in the letters or words you want to use um, from the Mary Kate monogram. So instead of having to pull in all the letters that you want to stitch out for the hundreds of key fobs you want to make, you can simply type them in to the software and then export it all to your machine. So uh, this also allows you to reorder the stitching because when you pull in your key fobs design, that has an order of stitching, which includes your first stitch out, your placement line, all these things, as well as adding the backing. When you add your uh, Mary Kate monogram with the scroll and the letter, that's going to automatically come in to your machine as the secondary design. So I'm going to show you how to stitch it out by reordering it just on your machine screen. But if you do have embroidery editing software, you can reorder it on your screen and then export the entire design to your machine. And then you don't have to worry about, oh, which step do I need to sort of fast forward and rewind? Does that make sense? So that's just another um, benefit of upgrading or grabbing up either Embroidery Essentials uh, or Embrilliance Essentials software, or perhaps you have another embroidery editing software that will allow you to do that as well. So editing in your machine without using software. So first we're gonna load our designs. And as I mentioned, we will load the key fob first, and then we will load our monogram design. I'll show you this momentarily on the screen. I just wanna give you an overview here so you can see all the pictures and then we'll go and I'll show you um, hands-on approach. All right, so you'll have the option as well to bring in one key fob design or you can do two key fobs in a five by seven or larger hoop. So I'm using a 200 by 200 hoop today. I'm using a magnetic hoop you don't have to have a magnetic hoop, but I pretty much use them exclusively now because I love them so much. We have them at sulky.com if you want to check those out as well. If you bring in the single design, it will come in rotated a little bit. So you will first need to rotate it so that it's up and down so that you're looking at it straight on and you can center your monogram inside of your key fob. So you'll add your monogram, and then you'll want to basically click and drag your monogram over to the key fob file and use your alignment tools on screen to line up the monogram in the center of the square portion of the key fob. All right, and I'm gonna remove myself again because the top image you see with the E and the R that's what it's going to look like if you load the five by seven or larger design. You can do two in one hooping. If you bring in the single design, it's gonna look like the K down below. And it is really important uh, to mention that, you know, machine editing features are going to vary based on machine brand makes and model. So if you're seeing, you know, a motif or, or you're seeing a function that you're unfamiliar with, it might just look different because you have a different machine brand. 
Uh, so don't worry about that. Just refer to your manual for your editing functions. And you can definitely do this without software. Um, but again, if you do have software, it does make your life a little bit easier. So after we have centered the monogram into the key fob design, we're going to stitch step one. That is the placement line. And we're actually going to stitch this directly onto the stabilizer itself. I will show you that momentarily. Then you're going to skip the next step and stitch all the steps for the monogram. Then you'll go back to step two to complete your key fob stitch out. So that's what you need to remember if you're not using software to merge your designs and to sort the, uh, the steps of your design. Okay, so we've got to, after step one, we've got to skip to the end to sew our monogram, then go back to step two. Okay, is everybody with me? Give me a thumbs up if everybody is with me and understands. All right. So the stitch out. Um, so what kind of stabilizer are we using? Sulky Sticky Plus, one of my favorite stabilizers. And we are going to hoop only the stabilizer. That is going to allow us to strategically place our vinyl in the hoop over the placement lines and conserve some of the vinyl so that we can get more stitch outs out of the material in our kits. Also, if you don't have a magnetic hoop, you can't hoop the vinyl anyway. It's too thick. If you happen to actually get it in your hoop rings, it would mar the fabric. So we don't want to hoop it anyways. Whether you're using a magnetic hoop or a standard hoop, we're only going to hoop the stabilizer itself. Now, if you are using a magnetic hoop, it is possible to get the marine vinyl into the hoop because these magnets are just sandwiching it with the stabilizer, right? But as I mentioned, it's much easier to conserve the fabric when we are going to do this method of hooping only the stabilizer. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, so you can see that I've got the paper side of the Sticky Plus stabilizer facing up. So I can see the grid, I can see Sulky Sticky Plus is printed on it. That's how I know it's right side up in the hoop. This has the paper backing attached to it because it's sticky underneath. And that's how we're going to adhere our marine vinyl to the hoop in a sort of unique way, actually. All right, I'm gonna remove myself from the screen again. And this is what I'm gonna show you step-by-step step over at the machine. So when you stitch step one, that's the placement line for your vinyl fabric. So what I thought was, I'm going to try just removing the paper backing behind the key fob stitch out outline only, rather than removing a big chunk of sticky stabilizer, having to remove a bunch of it from the vinyl that I'm not using that I want to conserve. Um, so I have discovered that this is one of the greatest ways to use the Sticky Plus slitting pen as well. Let me know in the comments and in the chat if you already have a Sulky Sticky Plus slitting pen. This tool is specifically made to slice through only the paper backing of this type of stabilizer. So if you've ever done hoopless embroidery with a sticky stabilizer, then you know if you use a pin or even the dullest scissor in the drawer and you slice through that paper backing, I would say 70% of the time you're going to slice through the stabilizer as well. And then you have to rehoop it, do your placement lines again or what have you. And a lot of the times you end up wasting that piece of stabilizer. So the Sticky Plus slitting pen it slits through only that filmoplast backing. It has a pretty sharp point to it, but 
Yes. I mean, I have really tried my hardest to press really hard on it, and I can't get it to go through that stabilizer. There have been a time where, you know, maybe it's up in the air, it's not flat on my work surface, and I can puncture it if I'm really trying hard. Uh, but when you're doing this application, it's a pretty safe bet that you're only going to slice through that Filmoplast backing. So what I did was I took my slitting pen and I ran it along the placement line stitching where, you know, our needle has basically, you know, it hasn't really perforated the stabilizer, but it's given us some holes along that paper backing. So I take the slitting pen and I run it along the holes. Then I remove the paper backing just in that area of the key fob. So when I go to reuse my vinyl, I don't have any stabilizer touching it. So is everybody with me? I just thought this was like revolutionary. <laughs> Maybe other people are doing it, but man, it, it, I've done two projects since uh, creating this tutorial or, you know, sort of revising this tutorial, and I've used it in the same way. It's been so helpful for so many things. So you're going to be seeing me do this technique a lot, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in future projects as well. So this is why I also like using the KK2000 to adhere the vinyl uh, to my hooped stabilizer because the only sticky part that is uh, that is revealed or available to me is uh, around the key fob itself. So I'm going to lightly spray my first piece of vinyl because I'm doing two in one hooping. So if you're only doing one, don't worry about that. And I'm going to place it over the placement line. And you can see I did leave a good size border of vinyl around the placement line. You don't want to go right up next to it uh, because we want, you know, a nice clean cut when we when we trim our key fobs. So the sticky plus is going to, you know, help our vinyl from shifting and moving, but just a little shot of the KK2000 um, also helps adhere you know, the whole piece of vinyl. So you can see I've sort of abutted my two pieces of vinyl for the two key fobs that I'm creating. And that gives me just enough of a border that I'll be able to cleanly trim around my key fob after the stitch out is complete. And you can see this is, you know, I'm being very conservative with my fabric so that I have left, you know, a good amount left over um, for more key fobs as I move along. So remember, then we're going to skip to the monogram file. We're going to go all the way down and select the monogram file after we do um, our placement stitch out. So you can see I'm stitching out the monogram here and you don't see the outline stitching anymore because we that outline stitching was just the placement line for our vinyl. So a lot of the times with an in the hoop applique or an in the hoop um, project, um, you'll see that you have a tacking stitch right over the top of your placement stitch. We are not having a tacking stitch with this design. Our final stitching is going to be that key fob outline. So it's just one clean line and it's a triple bean stitch. So it's really pretty and decorative. All right, so we are going to skip after our placement line and go to our monogram file and it'll stitch out the pretty sort of scrolly floral design and then it'll stitch out the letter as well after that. So you can choose, pick and choose from all of the thread colors that come in the kit. You have six colors to choose from. So as I mentioned, I went with sort of a tone on tone feel with the two that I made here. And then uh, the one I'm gonna show you in a little bit, I'm gonna use that glittery black vinyl with the silver thread. Um, I don't know, maybe for the whole thing. 
I don't know. Maybe we'll mix it with a pink as well. Or a turquoise. See, I can't even decide. <laughs> Give me too many options and I'm just, whew, we'll, we'll get creative with it. All right. <laughs> so then after we stitch the monogram and letter, we're going to remove the hoop from the machine, not messing with our hooping at all. We're going to turn the hoop over to the wrong side and place another piece of vinyl right side up over the design. And we're going to use some tape to secure. You can also use your KK2000, stick it down, and then just tape a little bit along the edges. Now I have a super sneak peek for all of you. Are you ready? I know I'm going to tell you and you're going to be so mad that you can't get it yet, but I'm going to tell you anyways because I'm so excited about it. We have a brand new product that's coming to sulky.com. And because I have the best job in the world, I already have access to it. I know, it's pretty cool. Um, but don't worry, you'll be able to grab it up soon. And of course, you'll be the first to know here on So What when it is available. But we have a brand new clear embroidery tape. Sulky clear embroidery tape. This is the coolest stuff. It is strong but leaves no residue. It tears absolutely cleanly. If you happen to stitch over it, you can just tear it away from the stitching and it's absolutely gone. So if you're used to using painter's tape, masking tape, um, paper tape, things like this. This is another one of those game changers for machine embroidery. So check it out. See how cleanly it tears away just like that. You can also reuse it a few times. So use it for this project. And then what I do a lot of the times is I will just stick it to the top of my machine or along the side. And that way I have it at hand and I can reuse it a couple of times. Also, you can make skinnier pieces just like this. Like, look how cleanly it tears. Plus, it's clear, so you can see right through it. I mean, okay, I'm so excited. Anyways, <laughs> I know you're going to be mad because it's not available at the, at the Sulky website right now, but it will be shortly, and I just, I felt as my loyal So What viewers you deserved a sneak peek for the clear embroidery tape. So that's what is featured um, in some of these images that you see here. So after you tape down that layer of vinyl, you're gonna return your hoop back to the machine, and then you will stitch the next part of the key fobs design. So you're gonna go back to the key fobs after you've done the monogram, and then you'll stitch the front and back together with that heavy bean stitch. Um, it also will stitch our little placement circles for the cam snaps. So this is the part where you really want to make sure you're using matching thread in the bobbin or a thread in the bobbin that looks really great with the fabric. So ask me how I know this. I kind of learned it the hard way because it just didn't occur to me with the first one that I made. So this is the first one that I made, and you can see I've got sulky white bobbin thread in the bobbin. Now, it's not that serious because I use the white snap, still coordinates, um, and it doesn't bother me too much, but I think I would have preferred, since I've got this cool tone on tone look, I think I would have preferred had I remembered to put that turquoise thread in the bobbin at this point. So just be mindful of that. And you know, you could also with, let's say the pink one, if you wanna use the variegated thread on the top, you could put your plain pink thread in the bobbin and it would just match and coordinate, uh, you know, and almost disappear along the key fob back. All right, so your design is now complete. You can see I have that white bobbin thread on the turquoise one and my pink bobbin thread 
uh, when I realized it on my pink one. Then we're going to remove our hoop from the machine, remove the tape on the back, and then we're going to carefully remove the excess stabilizer. So you can take your stabilizer out and it's a tear away stabilizer. So it will tear cleanly away um, from, you know, your stitching line. Then all you need to do is trim up each key fob um, about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching. You can get pretty close, but don't get too close. You want a little bit of a border along your pretty bean stitches. So you can see my completed stitch outs. I've got my little hole placement for my decorative cam snaps. And then we're going to insert the snaps. So if you grab up a cam snap setter that has those tools as well, um, it should come with an awl, like I mentioned. Um, it'll also come with a little tiny screwdriver, which is so handy for other things in your sewing room also. Um, but the little awl, uh, you can use that to poke the hole in your key fob and you just, you know, go right through the little hole placement line that was stitched out for you. Um, I used, because I have one, um, I used a cool little hole punch that I have that I got at Sally Tomato and here I'll show you what it looks like a little bit more up close. Um, see, I got it from Sally Tomato because I was always inserting a lot of rivets and, um, you know, decorative hardware onto bags and totes and things like that. And the cool thing about this tool is it has all these different sizes and you just turn it over to get these different sizes of holes for, as I mentioned, rivets, snaps, things like this. So the smallest one is what I used here. And it just goes through all of these layers and you just simply boop and punch through the layers of vinyl. So if you have one of these or you grab one at sallytomato.com, you can use that for this. Or it's super easy to use that all. I think that for me, I'm a little bit accident prone and um, the all, I, I just, <laughs> you really got to keep it away from your fingers. I'll just say that. Just be careful. Uh, when you're using that all. You can also get it started on your self-healing cutting mat, you know, get the point in, then lift it up and kind of go through um, away from yourself and away from your fingers to get, you know, your hole punched. But you don't have to be too aggressive. The vinyl is pretty buttery and you can go right through it. And then after you create your holes, you are going to secure your snaps using that cam snap setter tool. And it's very easy to use. Like I said, it doesn't require a hefty hand. It's just a super easy uh, motion. So you will need your male and female um, uh, snap socket, and then you need the two caps. So you can use two round caps, a heart cap, and a round cap. You'll have plenty of snaps to experiment with. And if you have a different snap in your collection, maybe a metal snap and you already have that type of snap setter, go ahead and use that. Um, or you can grab up that cam snap setter and use these cute little cam snaps that come in your kit. All right, so I am gonna go to the sewing machine now and show you basically, you know, why not do a stitch out? We'll get as far as we can. Um, but I am going to address some of the questions that have come in so far, and then we will head over to the machine, and I'll show you on screen all the things I just discussed. All right, so let's see. Yes, Susan says, the Sally Tomato Punch, it's a leather punch. She says, my mom has one that's about 100 years old. That is so awesome. Yeah, this one, you know, I, I really was struggling doing, I did a purse, with an adjustable strap that had um, a little prong to it and you adjusted the strap by moving the prong, you know, kind of like a belt loop, right? Where you need lots of holes. And I, I wanted them to look uniform and beautiful along the strap. And I thought I'm never gonna be able to do this with an awl. 
Um, it just, it'll look a little hairy and whatever. So I, that's really what prompted me to grab one of these up at sallytomato.com. Uh, but at any rate, it also worked for this project. So I thought I would just throw that tip in there for you. But for this, since our cap has, or excuse me, since our snap has a front and back to it, your hole is going to be totally concealed. Um, so you really don't need to grab up this specialty tool to have a nice, you know, perfect round hole punched in your uh, key fob. But I just wanted to mention if you happen to have one of those, this is a great use for it. Um, Connie says, is the design for the key fob included with the kit? Yes, it is. So right here, you're seeing our flash sale information. You can grab up the kit right now. It'll be up this special price for today only, $29.99. Uh, retails for $74.99. You get all the great vinyl I was talking about, two sheets of each of the colors you see there. You'll get snaps in white and pink with a variety of hearts and round snaps to choose from all of the sulky threads, the sticky plus stabilizer, the six swivel clips, as well as a pack of Microtex organ needles. So a great, great deal. You also get the key fobs design. You can either uh, use the single design or the double that I was showing you that I'll show you momentarily as well. And you also get the Mary Kate monogram, A to Z, all the letters of the alphabet, it includes the letter as well as the cute border stitching that fits onto the key fob. All right. Vicki says, what about that slitting pen? How do we get it? The slitting pen is available at sulky.com. It's only like seven bucks, something like that. And you can add it to your cart when you grab up your kit. And you will thank me for it. Seriously. It's the best invention for machine embroiderers. All right. Mary says the thread alone is worth it. I'm telling you, this is a crazy price. All right. So grab it up because at midnight tonight, you will no longer get the special price and the special deal. Okay. Let me go back and see what kind of questions we have coming in. Um, does Sulky sell additional marine vinyl? We do not. We only have this in the kit. Um, so, but you know, it, it's great colors. And as I mentioned, you can probably get 12 stitch outs if you're really create or really careful. I almost said really creative. Um, if you're really careful about your placement of the marine vinyl over your placement stitches, um, you can get a lot more than six stitch outs. You'll just need to grab up some more swivel clips to make additional key fobs. All right. Oh, Sandra says um, it's out of stock for the snap setter. You might just want to Google it or, you know, search a different seller for it because I have noticed the same cam snap setter is available from lots of different sellers. Um, so you'll probably be able to grab it. I wanted to make sure that mine said cam on it, though, just to be on the safe side, um, especially if you are shopping on Amazon, um, Sandra, like you said, because, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of kind of knockoff products that can happen over there on the Amazon. So be careful. Make sure you look at, um, you know, the reviews and uh, the seller of the item as well. Okay. Joan says, I'm glad to see that the snap setter appears easier than I thought to use. Arthritis in hands. Yes. So I also, I have arthritic thumbs. Um, it's really a pain, I tell you. Um, and it's very smooth. We'll see if we can get through a stitch out and I'll show you how easily uh, the snaps come on. Cindy says, if you make them bigger, it would make a great luggage tag. Great idea. And you know, you don't have to use a swivel clip on here. Um, since you are able to take it on and off, you could use a circle ring. You could use a D ring. Um, I save hardware from all kinds of things. If I have used and abused a bag, a backpack, um, if I get a promotional keychain from somewhere, I salvage all of those key rings 
and all of that stuff. And I put it in a little box. And then when I'm working on a project like this, I can go into my little box and see if something is going to work for the hardware. So you might you know, have something on hand already that you can use as your little connector. But you also don't even need the connector. If you're going to use this as a luggage tag, maybe you already have a part of your luggage. Maybe there's a loop on it or like I have a backpack with a bunch of loops on it. I can just snap this around one of those loops and I don't even need the hardware. So you can try enlarging this on your machine screen. You can go up only 20% in size on your machine screen. If you have software, you'll have a lot more capabilities to manipulate the size of your key fob. I highly suggest a test stitch out just to make sure that when you also enlarge your monogram that there's enough stitches in the design to fill out all the areas of your letter and the pretty, you know, border design as well. Because sometimes, we will enlarge a design and the stitches don't compensate for the size. That's why our screen only allows us to go up or down 20% because any larger or smaller than that requires an adjustment to the stitch density. And we can only do that if we happen to have software that we use with our machine. Some softwares will automatically do it for you, but you do need to do a test stitch out because it can be hit or miss depending on the design. All right, let's see. Love the tools, okay. Paula says, I'm going on a cruise with friends this summer. Key fobs will make a nice gift and souvenir. That's such a thoughtful gift and such a great idea. How do you trim around the key fob so cleanly? Um, great question. So very sharp scissors and I like to use smaller scissors and of course I'm going to look around and not see them. I'm going to just hold momentarily. Um, I have a sort of my, we all have our favorite scissors, right? I mean, I probably have 50 pairs of scissors. Um, however, these are my favorite small snips for things like this, especially when cutting through lots of layers. Um, even when you're doing a zipper with a box around it, right? For like a pocket and you've got to clip into those corners, very pointy, sharp end and very sharp scissors. Um, and did you know you can take your scissors to sewing events? Um, sometimes they even have it at farmer's markets when the farmer's market's open, usually around, you know, Memorial Day weekend, things like that, see if they have a knife sharpener person there that can also do your sewing shears and you can get them sharpened and tuned up and all perfect for you. Um, but anyway, I like a smaller pair of scissors because I have better control over the small key fob and I like something with a really sharp point so that when I'm slicing around this side and I get to, um, the you know flap that folds over I can get right into that corner then I can come at it from the other direction and meet that corner perfectly. All right so let's get to the stitch out so we can see everything in action. All right so I have my machine set up I'm going to remove myself from the screen so that you can get a great uh, image of what is really happening here and keep your questions coming. We will continue to address them. Um, someone's saying, what needle are we using? So in the kit, you also get a pack of organ Microtex needles. They have a nice, slim, sharp point that's perfect for this type of fabric. So we're using a Microtex needle and we're using a size 7010. 7010 because we're using that lighter weight 60 weight poly light thread in the needle and in the bobbin. All right, so you can see I've got, I imported my key fobs design and I chose the double design. That means I'm gonna get two out of the same hooping. Oops, I just hit the camera. I have also imported two 
Mary-Kate monogram files. I have a K and I have an E. So now I need to line them up. Let me move my, um, let me move my microphone somewhere. All right, can everybody still hear me pretty well? Okay, so now I need to line up my monogram files with my key fob files. So I'm going to click and drag it over to the key fob. Then I'm going to use my alignment tools to get it pretty well centered within the key fob frame. Whoops. If you have a stylus, it makes really quick work of this. And then if you accidentally hit the center button like I just did. All right, so the frame of my monogram design is basically lined up with the perimeter outline of the key fob file. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with our E and use our little alignment tools. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell my machine I'm ready for the stitch out. And I've got my Sticky Plus already in the hoop. I have the paper side facing up. And yes, I'm using a magnetic hoop. You can use a standard hoop, don't worry about that. Either one is fine. I just, I love my magnetic hoop. So I'm gonna hit go. And again, keep in mind that your machine could have different functions here, okay? So definitely have your manual on hand so that you can do the on-screen editing that you need to do um, and all of those good things. So I'm not gonna do any basting functions or any additional functions because my first uh, step of the stitch out is gonna be that placement line. And that's what I'm going to use to remove my Sticky Plus backing. So I'm just gonna say continue. All right, we're gonna put our hoop onto the machine. All right, so here are my embroidery steps. And the colors are not gonna match the colors of thread that we have. And that's completely fine. You can see number one, one, that's my first design, first color. Number one, two, that's my first design, second color. Remember, we're gonna skip number two and go to the monogram files. Then when we're done with our monograms, we will go back and do step two, which is the second stitch out for the key fob, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and stitch out the outline of the key fobs right on to the paper backing of the sticky stabilizer. I love doing it this way rather than removing the paper backing first because my needle is not going to stick into the stabilizer. Now, if you are removing the paper backing for a different project or something like this, and you're concerned about the stickiness building up on your needle or causing any issues with your thread, which shouldn't happen, but if it does, you can grab up some Sewer's Aid. We have this at sulky.com, very inexpensive. It's a water-based lubricant that you can put right onto the shaft of the needle, or not the shaft, the this part of the needle. Um, and it makes it just glide through the stabilizer and it also helps with stickier fabrics such as this coated vinyl that has the sparkles to it, um, things like metallic thread. It has a lot of uses for it. Help, also helps you thread needles if you're hand sewing. So just for the sake of showing you how to use it, 
I put the tiniest little dot on my finger, just rub it um, in both my fingers. I'm just gonna rub it along the needle. And I already have my needle threaded, which is fine, but I'm gonna run it across the needle and that's gonna be enough for the entire stitch out. And it's water-based. So if it gets on your clothes or um, a different kind of fabric, it's not going to harm it with oils or things like that. So it's really great. All right, let's go ahead and sew out color stop number one. So remember, we're going to skip the next color stop. So just so that I don't forget to do that, I'm going to go ahead and skip. But remember, I've got to remove the sticky backing on my stabilizer. So I'm going to go to my trim position, um, but you can also just remove the hoop from the machine. I'm going to remove the hoop so that you can see it. Also, I don't want to risk uh, harming my machine bed while I'm slicing through the stabilizer either. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this up a little bit. And I'm going to trim that little jump stitch with my curved tip squeezers, which is another gift to this embroidery world. And now I've got my slitting pen, okay? So I'm going to run it across the placement stitching line where it's a little bit perforated by the needle. So if you're ever doing a design, um, or excuse me, if you're ever doing a hoopless embroidery where you want to remove the perimeter stitching, tell your machine to do a perimeter basting function then use your slitting pen and go across the perforations from the basting stitches. And you will be able to remove the paper backing along either the perimeter of your design or the perimeter of your hoop cleanly and perfectly, which really aids also in the placement of your designs. So now that we have perforated that, we're just gonna get it started along, it's hard to do up in the air. Just gonna get it started along one of the edges. And we can cleanly remove the paper inside of our design. I mean, you know, I'm so excited about this. Sometimes, you know, you miss a little hole or two, but it's fine. So it's as easy as that. Now, if I want to create two in the same color, I can simply put my one sheet of vinyl over the top and I can create two in the same color. Or I can do what I showed you uh, before. Let me grab my other vinyl piece. And I can use my pink scrap for one, put that over the top and stick it down. And then I can abut another color right next to it as well. 
I'm going to go ahead and use the same color just for the purposes of showing you the whole demo and make sure to give yourself a little bit of a border. So just to make sure this isn't going to go anywhere, I'm going to spray it a little bit with KK2000 and then let's see if I can do this up in the air so you can actually see it. Make sure to cover all of your placement lines. It's a little bit tricky. Just to make sure I can get this. Ooh, it's a little bit too close for comfort here. I don't have a whole lot along the bottom. So I'm actually going to do this I'll use the same black vinyl, but I'm going to abut my pieces like I showed you in the previous demo, just to make sure I have enough border fabric beyond that placement stitching. So grab my other piece of vinyl and just butt it up against each other. A little bit more KK2000. And now we're going to return our hoop to the machine. And I'm going to put it back to my current stitch position. And now I get to decide what thread color I want to use for the border. Remember, I've skipped the second color stop because that completes my design. I don't want to do that yet because I don't have the backing piece on yet. So for my little swirls on the K, I think I'm going to go with this pretty turquoise red color. And again, this is the 60 weight sulky poly light thread. It's going to give us a nice, crisp, readable font. And we will go ahead and stitch that part. While it's stitching out, I'm going to come back and answer some questions so that we don't have to sit here and watch it um, stitch 4,700 stitches. But let's get it started here. Now, if this happens to you where your thread tail is poking out, um, it has not been brought to the wrong side enough, you can stop your stitch out and just clip the end off with your curved tip squeezers and then you can continue the stitch out. I'm going to let this go for just a minute and I will adjust my microphone settings so that hopefully you can hear me during the stitch out and then we will address some questions. So I'll be right back to get the questions in a couple of minutes. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear me um, as well as you did. I'll try to get my microphone as close as I can um, so that you can hear me over the loud machine while it's stitching out. If we do need to stop the stitch out because you simply cannot hear me well, um, I'll do that as well and we can address questions. Sharon says, will 40 weight thread work? So 
at the beginning of the presentation today, maybe you might have missed that part. We did talk about the benefits of using the 60 weight thread rather than the 40 weight thread. And I showed a side by side picture of this exact design done in 40 weight and this exact design done in the 60 weight. So the 60 weight thread just gives you a crisper looking design when you're when you're working on something that is small like this. Um, you know, 40 weight thread will work. It's just you're going to have a thicker line weight um, around all these small little swirls and, you know, what we're stitching out right now. So you can try it out, do a test stitch out, see how you enjoy it. Um, but we really recommend the 60 weight poly light for smaller letter designs and, you know, things that have these intricate swirls in them that are on a smaller scale, I would say a half inch or less, they just perform better with that lighter weight thread. All right. Thanks everybody saying you can hear me loud and clear. Okay. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Linda says, I have multiple cans of KK2000 since the other crafters in my family have discovered the wonders of this prod product. I love the KK as well. KK2000 is a temporary spray adhesive and it's air soluble. So it dissipates into the air after about 48 to 72 hours. It's great for basting quilts small quilty projects like placemats, placing appliques. Um, sometimes I will use it for in the hoop applique. Actually, every time I'll use it for in the hoop applique. But in a pinch, when I have had less fusible web on hand that I need for a project, I've actually used the KK2000 to do machine applique without fusible web too. Um, so it's, it's just, as you said, useful for so many things. Sharon says, are there two sheets of each vinyl color for the front and back? Yes, there are. And actually, when we are done stitching this out, we can trim it a little bit, um, just, you know, still getting ourselves this border, and we can use that same vinyl piece for the back. Um, but you do get two sheets of the black sparkle, two sheets of the pink, and two sheets of the turquoise vinyl in the kit already. So, and it is enough to create about six key, or excuse me, 12 key fobs um, if you place your sheets very thoughtfully conserving um, enough vinyl fabric as you can. But again, make sure you do leave yourself a good border so that you can um, trim it all together for that nice clean looking edge uh, once our key fob is complete. All right. Can you use cork fabric for these? Great question. Um, I don't see why not. Love cork fabric. I uh, would give it a try for sure. Hmm. All right. And Mary says, you can use the spray right next to your machine. I always go outside. You know, that's probably a good rule of thumb to not use it by your machine. Um, I do a lot of demos where I can't really shift from one camera to another um, that easily. So, but I will say I clean my machine frequently. I am always opening up the entire bobbin case, cleaning in there, making sure that there's no buildup from fabrics, threads, um, sprays, that type of thing. So, but do be aware of that, you know. You probably don't want to spray anything while your hoop is on the machine, right? You can take your vinyl fabric, go over to a different area of your sewing room, spray the back side of it, and then bring it on over to your um, hoop. Uh, Lacey says, I love the grid on the stabilizer. It's very helpful. Yes, it's also a great placement guide in and of itself. Um, and a question about free editing software. So I know with the Embrilliance Essentials software, they do have a free version that allows you to do certain things. Um, so you can get a feel for the software and if you 
feel that it's user friendly enough for you and that, oh, I can probably do this, um, you can try the trial or free software. A lot of other places offer a trial version as well. So you can see if you know it's right for you and right for your machine before you make the purchase. Uh, so you know you can uh, take a look. Danielle says, "Can you show the point on the slitting pen, please?" Absolutely, I can. Here's the point. Can you see it well? Maybe you, there we go. It's very sharp, but it's really not sharp enough where it's going to, you know, puncture your skin. Um, I would say it has a sharp point like a pin, but, you know, it's not even going to go through my skin here. Uh, and it's just magic. As you saw, how easy I was able to slice through that paper of the stabilizer without slicing through the stabilizer itself. All right, I think I might, I'm going to skip um, the second key fob just for our demo here today, and then um, maybe I can go back to it. But I do need to uh, stitch out my letter design, so I'm going to pick a color for that. And I really kind of think I like the, oops, I'm caught here. Hold, please. All right. I think I really like the silver um, thread for my lettering design. So that's what I'm going to go with for that portion of the monogram. Because it kind of brings out the sparkly um, nature or the, the, the silver sparkles in the black marine vinyl. And we will go ahead and stitch out that letter. All right. So let's see. Back to our questions here. Um, another question about using the slitting pen along that placement line. Mary says, when you do that, won't that cut the thread too? Um, so you actually can use the tool sort of along the side of the thread almost to remove that. But quite honestly, if it removes the thread, if you accidentally slice through the thread, um, which I have done this many times since kind of discovering that I that it worked so well, um, and I haven't sliced through the thread, but if you happen to, it actually doesn't even really matter because that thread is getting sandwiched inside of your two, your front and back key fob pieces. So you're never going to see it. And it's not used as a decorative element or a construction element. So if that thread gets nicked or comes unraveled, you don't even need to re-sew it. It's only there as a placement tool. So once you remove that paper backing, there's your placement aid. That's the outline of your entire key fob. So you don't even really need it there. All right. And I know we're going long, everybody. Usually our so what's are about an hour, but I did want to show you the entire stitch out. So if you do have to leave, I won't hold it against you, but be sure and comment, share, like our post today so that you can be one of our lucky winners to win a key fobs kit. All right. <clears throat> Susie Q says, I don't see the sewing aid on your site. So it's called Sewer's Aid. We'll put a link for it right in the comments here. And it should be there at sulky.com. Um, let me just make sure. And then we will go back and finish our stitch out. And we'll be almost ready with a key fob. Um, All right, so instead of going to my second key fob design, I'm going to go ahead and skip that, and we're going to go back to number two. Number two of our first design, I'm just going to remove 
this so I don't waste it since I'm going to skip this stitch out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number two is going to be the outline of our key fobs. And I'm going to switch to the black thread that comes in our kit so that the thread on top and the thread on the bottom match my color of vinyl. Um, I should have mentioned I did load my bobbin with the black 60 weight poly light thread for my entire key fob. So that's what I'm using in the bobbin. And that's what I'm going to use for my outline stitching now. All right, we are threaded and we're going to go ahead and stitch the second key fob design and then I'll just go ahead and skip my second key fob that I have in the hoop and we'll go ahead and trim it up and see if we have time to insert a snap as well. So here we go. No. Tracy, thank you. Um, Tracy just let me know that I completely forgot to put the backing on my key fob. Let's stop the stitch out. <laughs> Actually, before we do the holes, because I'm just going to go over the outline stitching again. And thank you so much for letting me know, because, uh, you know, it's difficult to do this live and get everything um, correct. So, I so appreciate your comment. All right. Pretend that we didn't do step two, please, because we need the back of our key fob placed on here. Goodness gracious. We're going to go ahead and take off our hoop. And I'm just going to trim off my threads here. And since I have all this left over, I am going to trim a little piece off, leaving a good size border. I just got so excited that we were going back to step two that I um, completely lost my mind for a second. I'm going to spray my backing piece away from my machine a little bit and center it over that stitch out. And then I'm going to use that great, brand new, not available yet, but almost clear embroidery tape from Sulky. And I'm just going to stick down the perimeter so it doesn't get caught on the machine bed during the stitch out. And just ignore my second key fob. We are skipping that just for time's sake here, but I mean, they really do come together so, so quickly. All right, now we are ready for step two. So let's go back to step two. And oh, we're already there. And I'm going to sew that perimeter stitch again, dropping stuff to secure the back to the front. I'm so grateful that you showed me that before I took everything out of the hoop because I would have had to do the entire stitch out again. All right. And Sheila says, I'm so glad I'm not the only one to do this. <laughs> and 
that's why we're doing this together, right? Now you will probably all say, I'm not going to do what Ellen did. <laughs> all right. Let's see. A lot of people are saying, I've made many of these key fobs. So I hope that you're still learning something new. Um, maybe just with the tape, maybe with that slitting pen. It really is such a game changer for projects like this where you don't necessarily need to stick down the entire piece of fabric um, when you're doing the hoopless embroidery. Um, a lot of people are coming into the chat talking about sharpening their scissors as well because of my comment earlier. Um, Janet says, my shoe repair shop will sharpen scissors. Who knew? That's amazing. So, yeah, you can shop around, ask around. I, I can get mine done at the farmer's market, like I mentioned. So, oh, we're going to stop the stitch out because we are not sewing our second key fob quite yet. So, let me go ahead and grab our hoop. And we will do the next step. Oops. I forgot, when you stop your stitch out, you need to raise up your presser foot as well. So I do need to do a little bit of trimming um, for my jump threads. And again, it's kind of hard to do up in the air, but we will get them all trimmed up because I made a bit of a mess going back and forth with the stitch out. But we've got our little placement holes for the snaps, our nice bean stitch along the outside of the vinyl, and on the front, it's gonna be very pronounced since we did it twice. But just go ahead and clean up your threads, whatever you have left here. It is hard to see the black on black, but I think we've got it. And now we can remove that tape. Like I mentioned, it's reusable. You can get a couple of different, uh, you know, uses out of your tape. So I just stick it to the side of my machine so that it's there the next time I need to use it for my next round of key fobs. Comes away cleanly and nicely. And then we're gonna go ahead and take our stabilizer out of the hoop. And we've got one key fob done. So I will ditch my hoop here. And our next step is going to be to remove that stabilizer from the edge of our stitching. So I'm going to just come in here and kind of trim closely to it so I can get it started and just kind of reach in between those layers to start tearing it away. And it'll come away cleanly from that edge. You just have to kind of reach in there and get it. And then you won't have any stabilizer poking out between the layers of your key fob fabrics. Okay, just comes out just like that. I have a little bit of trimming that I missed on the front for my uh, snap placement circles, which is, a, they're a little bit hard to see, um, but I love how the colors just pop off of the sparkly vinyl, really cool. So I have my front and I have my back, and now we're gonna trim close to our thread outline leaving ourselves a little bit of a border. And these sharp scissors are really important. So I go right up to the corner, and then I'm gonna come around this edge, and go right up to the corner and meet it, and then pull that away. And this doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because honestly, nobody's going to notice. And you can come in and, you know, kind of trim up any areas along that curve that aren't 
quite as pretty as you'd like them to be. About an eighth of an inch, you can seriously just eyeball it. Or if you feel more comfortable marking it, you can do that as well. I hear lots of comments coming in behind me, so we will address the questions, concerns momentarily when I can get back over um, from behind this camera shot. All right, so now we have our key fob is complete. We need to create our holes for our snaps, and then I'll show you how to insert one of the snaps so that you get an idea of how that cam setter, cam snap setter rather works. So in, in lieu of using an awl while I am talking live, I'm gonna use that hole punch that I have. I'm just lining it up in the center of that placement hole and I have a perfect little hole for my snap. It, the size two of this tool fits perfectly within that little sewn hole. So now we need to choose the color of snap that we're gonna use for this guy. And I think I'm gonna go with the white since I don't have any pink um, thread that I've used. And, all right. And you wanna make sure that you have a male and a female washer. You don't want two females or two males um, because then they will not fit within each other. So you wanna make sure that one has, is looks like this, and then one is recessed like this. All right. And um, I'm hearing people are asking when we're going to do the drawing for the kit. And we won't be drawing the kit until after the sale ends. So we won't be drawing for that free kit until um, after our 24 hour sale period for the kit. The kit is on sale until midnight tonight. And then I will be uh, drawing the kit from anybody who is commenting, um, asking questions, all of those good things um, tomorrow or maybe even the next day. All right, so I'm gonna use two circular snaps. If you wanna use the cute little heart snaps for yours, that is also an option. There are plenty of snaps um, in your kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap on, and then you can use either the female or male piece for your first snap. And you simply put them together insert that one into the cap, and then you take your little snap setter, and this black part is where you're going to rest the top of the snap, and I'm just making sure it's centered, and then just like that, pinch it together, and your snap is on there. Couldn't be simpler, and you know, we're off to the races. All right. Now I'm going to put my male snap on this side and insert it right here. Make sure everything's lined up and give it a squish. And just like that, both of our snaps are on. Our key fob is complete. And we just need to add one of our swivel clips. I keep losing all of the components of this kit. It's just strewn about all over the place. So I'm gonna take one of my swivel clips. You will get six in the kit. Put it in between my snaps and just like that, we completed one during our so what? So easy, really cute. I do wanna mention if you are using those heart snaps, you wanna be aware that your heart is facing the direction you want it to face. See, my heart is up and down. Now, when you have it on the snap setter, you wanna make sure that it's still in the right orientation. Ask me how I know this. 
here's my snap on its side. <laughs> I actually still think it's pretty cute. At least it's not upside down, right? So make sure that your heart is oriented properly when you're using your snap setter. So now I've got my sparkly black one added to the mix. And again, you could just sew across the bottom if you don't want to add a snap and then you'd have a permanent key fob. Or you could add a D ring, an, a circle ring, all kinds of things that maybe you have salvaged from belts or bags or other projects as well. So back to that kit. Um, again, $29.99 is our special flash sale deal for today only. This will expire at midnight tonight, so grab up this kit at this insane price. Someone said earlier, the thread alone is worth purchasing the kit, and you will also get the Sticky Plus stabilizer that you need, that pack of Microtex needles, the six swivel clips, and a whole slew of white and pink snaps with the circle and heart uh, varieties, and then you get two sheets of each of the colors of vinyl, the pink, the turquoise, and the fun black glitter sparkle. Love it. So you really can't get better than this, I, I must say. So I'll go ahead and answer a few more questions. Let's see. Lots of people <laughs> saying, <laughs> happens to all of us when we miss the backing, right? Good thing we can just stitch right over the top of it. All right. Uh, oh, here's a question. Um, can you use this Poly Sparkle? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the Sulky Poly Sparkle thread um, on these. Now, the Poly Sparkle thread is a 30 weight thread. So it's even heavier weight than the 40 weight thread we were talking about earlier. So, I mean, if you want to try the Poly Sparkle thread, I would maybe only try it in the letter. And then for the swirly outline, I would use a 60 weight thread. Um, as we mentioned today, the poly sparkle might look okay with the letter design, but I would do a test stitch out maybe on a scrap piece of vinyl um, or a, a different, you know, maybe you have a, a, a scrap piece of faux leather or a scrap piece of cork fabric, something similar in weight. Um, and just do the letter part of the Mary Kate monogram and see how you like the look of that because I haven't tested it on here and it's a much heavier weight thread than the 60 weight poly light. Um, is the bobbin the same color? So I used the black poly light in the bobbin for the whole stitch out in mine because I was using the black vinyl. So if you're using that pink vinyl, Maybe use the pink poly light in your bobbin. Or you can use um, a more, you know, sort of generic 60 weight white or black polyester bobbin, just sulky bobbin thread for the majority of the stitch out, and then swap out the poly light color that you want to use that matches or contrasts with your key fob for that last step after you've added the vinyl that I forgot. All right, uh, let's see. Someone is new to embroidery machine sewing. Looks like a great project for beginners. It absolutely is. The machine is doing most of the work for you. So as long as you remember those steps of skipping that last step of the key fob and then doing your monogram, or of course using software, but if you're a beginner, you likely don't have software, so you'll want to just remember to skip that second step and go back to it at the end. And then, of course, don't forget to add your vinyl backing piece. Um, but as you can see, that was a mistake that was easily recoverable. Nobody's going to know that I have a second layer of outline stitching on the front of my key fob because it's that beautiful triple bean stitch. So I just have six bean stitches on mine. And since I'm using that poly light thread, it didn't add too much bulk um, or any sort of bumpy texture to the front of my key fob. Um, all right. And yes, you do get the embroidery designs when you purchase the kit as well. So you will get the key fobs embroidery design, which comes as a single design for one hoop 
or you can use that double design that I was showing you for a five by seven or larger hoop, okay? All right. Yes, we get so excited to finish our project, we forget the last step. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> all right. Uh, Mary says, could I add more stuff if I already placed an order for the kit? So call our customer service number and see if you can add more to your order. Um, and if it hasn't shipped, I'm sure you probably can uh, continue your order where you left off, but you will need to call our 800 number, that, which you can find at sulky.com and just have them look up your order and make sure that you can do that. All right. Are those Fiskars four inch scissors? The ones that I were using are actually um, Olfa scissors. Um, and I absolutely love them. I've had them for years. They, they're so just sharp and clean and nice and small and just perfect for these kinds of projects. The right scissor for the job really saves you in the end. You know, I've got fabric shears, I've got uh, applique scissors, I've got double curve scissors, then I have my super sharps, smalls. So I've got my curved tip squeezers. You saw me using these. We also have these at sulky.com. This is what I use exclusively to trim jump threads in embroidery designs because you can get on top of the hoop and since the tip is curved, it doesn't nick the fabric or threads underneath. And you can get right up close to the stitching and clip that jump thread when you have these curved tip squeezers. They're also spring loaded, really easy to use. Again, if you have pain in your hands or arthritic thumbs like I do, um, they're just the perfect tool for that job. Okay, is the piece of vinyl big enough to make three fobs? Uh, you know, probably not if you're using the same color front and back, um, but you do get two sheets of each color. So I would say with the two sheets, you could create four fobs, so two per sheet. So you could actually get, um, with the six sheets of vinyl, you could actually create 12 key fobs, but you will only be getting six swivel clips in this kit. So with the additional, like I said, you could use D rings, um, key rings, O rings, sometimes they're called rectangle rings. You can salvage, you know, hardware from other places, or these are really readily available at your fabric store. Um, and I think they're one inch, um, where's my ruler? Yeah, they're one inch D-ring swivel clips. Um, and you can also find them in a lot of different hardware finishes as well, if you take a look. I've seen them at um, my local fabric store with an antique finish. Um, so you can check that out. Yeah, and you can see that I did remove the stabilizer completely um, in between the layers of vinyl, but it does have a white backing to it. So if it does bother you that you're seeing that white backing, it doesn't bother me in the least, but if it does bother you, um, and it might only bother you when you're using the black vinyl, um, it's just not as noticeable on like the light pink variety, but you can, somebody says, take a black Sharpie and just run it across the edge of your entire key fob. And then you won't have that little bit of white peeking out. Um, but again, it doesn't bother me in the least, but it might bother you. So that's a great tip. Thank you for that. Okay, I think I, have, I am all caught up on the questions for the project, but if not, you can always, always email us at info at sulky.com and we can help you out. Um, let's see, midnight witch time zone. So I have that the special ends tonight at midnight Eastern time. I'm just going to double check that it's not Pacific time because um, I know you're all going to be up at midnight wanting to order the kit. <laughs> I'll get you the answer to that. We'll put it in the chat, um, but just grab it up because supplies are limited of the kit. I'm not sure how many we have already sold, but I want to make sure that you all 
can get one. Um, all of you that want one can get one at this great, insane price. All right. And if you do need to watch any of this later, you can always go back to our Facebook or YouTube page and locate this So What episode and replay it, rewind, fast forward, everything like that. Also, you can register for the original version of this webcast, which uh, we have the great Julie Treve from Designs by Juju um, was with us for that free webcast, so you can get her tips and tricks as well. I tried to add my own here today on So What, but you can also add this event to your own personal library at sewingonline.sulky.com, and then you can review it and watch it at any time on that platform as well. All right. Oh, a lot of uh, tips have come in. Is a code necessary? No. It's already at this price at sulky.com. All you need to do is add it to your cart, and that special price of $29.99 um, will pop up. And again, if you're looking to get our free shipping uh, offer that we have, you'll get free shipping on orders over $60 at sulky.com. So if you're going to be joining us for, or is it? If you're going to be joining us for our quilty wall hanging embroidery sewing session that starts on uh, May 9th, uh, you might as well grab up your kit for the quilty wall hanging at the same time so that you can create your beautiful quilty wall hanging, have that kit on hand, get your Designs by Juju key fob kit at the same time, and grab up that free shipping offer as well, which I hate paying for shipping. I don't know about all of you. Um, and don't forget about your Sticky Plus slitting pen as well. If you don't have one of those already, <laughs> as you all know, I use it constantly. The sewer's aid also might be something that you want to grab up. And you can also check out those magnetic hoops at sulky.com if you're interested in grabbing up some sizes of those. All you do is plug in your machine make and model, and it will tell you the sizes of magnetic hoops that are compatible with your machine brand. All right. Well, I thank you so much for joining me on this extra special much longer so what that we did here today. I really wanted to share with you the experience of one of our free webinars or webcasts rather. And now that you've gotten a taste of it, I hope that you will join us and register for more of them over at sewingonline.sulky.com. We have one every single month, whether it's a free webcast, a video cast with lots, lots of multiple cameras, much like you saw here today on So What?, or one of our longer format embroidery sewing sessions, like our quilty wall hanging. I want to thank Designs by Juju so, so much for collaborating with us on this project, as well as our awesome quilty wall hanging that um, is such a fun project. I'm really passionate about it, and I, I can't wait for you all to experience that one as well. So I know you have lots and lots of choices for live videos to watch on social media, and all kinds of sewing education. And I can't thank you enough for joining me here with Sulky um, because we are really, really passionate about educating you all and making sure that you have the best experience at your sewing machines. So thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me here today. And I look forward to speaking with you all next week on another So What. Have a great day.